filming this on Thursday, November 7th. Um, as we know, what has happened? <laughs> It's not even funny to laugh about. Since election week is always stressful, it is always filled with nervousness, anxiety, and overall just horrible feelings. And after the results, that only um, intensified. So I wanted to film something that was a little bit comforting, a little bit uh, nostalgic, and something that I have been waiting to do for a really long time, and I never really knew why I was waiting to do it, and I feel like maybe this was the perfect opportunity. I'm going to be watching my favorite movie of all time. Today, I'm going to be watching Juno. As you guys know, I reference Juno a lot. As we know, my dog is named after the movie Juno. Juno? Juno. That's Juno. Juno is my favorite movie of all time, no matter what, no matter what masterpiece I see, Juno is always gonna be my favorite movie. I love it so much and I have never done a commentary on it because I felt like I needed to do something really huge for it for some reason because it's my favorite movie of all time. But I wanted to sit down and watch something that overall is a phenomenal film that I have been dying to talk about. I always love talking about Juno. When Sabrina Carpenter released Juno this year, I was having so many conversations about Juno because I absolutely love the film and any excuse to talk about this movie, I will take. So what better way to kind of calm down, watch something that literally makes me cry, tears of joy. I love this movie so, so much. And if you guys haven't seen Juno, I highly recommend it. And I hope that I can share that with you today because it is such a phenomenal movie about so many things that I think are important still to this day. It is very important to me that we all know that Elliot Page identifies as a male now, goes by he, him pronouns. So when I'm referring to Elliot Page as an actor, I'll be using those pronouns. And then when I'm talking about Juno, the character, I'm gonna be using the pronouns assigned with this character. If that is incorrect, please. Please let me know. I would love to know the proper way to uh, address uh, characters uh, played by transgender actors prior to their transition. Uh, for this video, for all intents and purposes, I will be referring to Juno the character with she, her pronouns. And then when I refer to the actor, Ellie Page, I'll be using he, him pronouns. If that is wrong, please let me know. I would love to know the better way to go about that in the future. It started with a chair. Wow. It always starts with a chair. I cannot believe that they did it on a chair. It's like starting off a movie by losing your virginity on a chair is so absolutely bonkers. Draws off, panties off, shirt on, and he's butt naked. <laughs> that little pink plus sign is so unholy. That ain't no etch a sketch. This is one, one doodle that can't, can't be undid, undid Holmes Gillett. That is one doodle that can't be undid, home skillet. That's the best line ever. And I can't even include it, but it's the best soundtrack ever. Like, it is the best soundtrack ever. It is such a good soundtrack. I listen to it still very frequently in my life. These songs are amazing. Um, never, never kill yourself when music like this exists. Never. Cause he gets up in the morning. Double socks, shorty shorts, sweatbands, Headband, hot pocket. Well, you know, I was just, I was thinking I'd just nip it in the bud before it gets worse. Yeah, yeah, wizard. I mean, you know, just, I guess, do whatever you think you should do, you know? Pause, like it's already so sad because you just want him, like she obviously is already in love with him. He's already in love with her, but he, she wants him to have some sort of reaction and he doesn't and it's like, but he's so respectful. He's like, do whatever you want. But at the same time, like have some care for her. And like the relationship between Bleecker and Juno is something that I think about on a daily basis. When people think about Rom Roman empire, when people say Roman emperor, that is my Roman empire. I think about their relationship constantly because first of all it's classic miscommunication trope this is why we need to stop the weird girl weird guy epidemic like we need to have some clarity in there because they're both too passive aggressive and um indecisive on things like you need to like someone needs to stand up stand up bleaker but then when bleaker just finally decides to stand up she's like freaking already pregnant and it's like you can't stand up to pregnant women you have to let them be pregnant mm -hmm. 
I think that might be one of my favorite things about the movie is that it's not just like a gag one time that she uses the burger phone. That's her phone. Like she doesn't have another phone. That's the phone. In turn, that also represents how young she is and how even though she speaks at an older age and she, she almost speaks as if she's older and more mature, this phone like represents her immaturity and her, her, she's a child. She's literally a child going through this. And I, and I think that's such an important vital part of the movie that it's just so there and apparent. She is a teenager. She's 16 years old. All, All babies, babies want, want to get, get born. born. All oh, babies, babies want, want to, to get, get born. Suchin? Girl, fuck Suchin. That's why you're alone, because no one likes you. All babies, babies want, want to get, get born. born. God appreciates your miracle. God appreciates your miracle. Girl, fuck you. And I want to nip this in the bud, because I feel like a lot of people are going to sit here me saying that, like, I and pro-choice and that Juno was like the opposite of that, but no, like it literally is, like she has the choice. This is a very small part of the movie. The movie is not about her choosing to keep the baby or not because she, she spoiler, she uh, goes to give the baby up for adoption. The movie is not even like really about the baby. Like, this it, is so crazy that like, but it's really about finding out who you are. I know that's such a, like a, a classic coming of age, like line, it's about finding out who you are and it's about like kind of realizing that you don't know who you are and finally making that decision by the end of the movie and discovering what kind of girl you are. One of my favorite lines from this movie that is going to come up is that she's talking to her dad and she says, I don't know what kind of girl I am. And by the end of the movie, she knows what kind of girl she is. She knows, she finally makes the decision that regardless of what she's supposed to do and what she's deemed to do as an adult or as a teenager, she makes the decision for herself. And I think that is like the primal point of this movie is like discovering who you are and discovering that you don't know everything. That when you are a teenager, you can think that you know everything and you know what's best for you. And that still takes so much time to do. Not asking for anything. Like it would be friggin' sweet if no one hit me. Well, what have you done, Junebug? Did you hit someone with the Previa? What did you What have you done, Junebug? Junebug! Boy, I thought you were the kind of girl who knew when to say when. I don't really know what kind of girl I am. I love that scene for so many different reasons. First of all, I love the reaction from the parents. I think it's like supportive, but not too supportive, if you know what I mean. Like that line when he says, I just thought you were the type of girl that knew when to say when, and her response to that, I don't know what kind of girl I am. It's perfect. It's perfect. I think that it like, it sums up so many different things of feelings when you're a teenager or when you're just a girl in general, I think. When you're just living life, when you don't know who you are, when you get into situations and, and it, it just, I just feel myself coming back to this line over and over again. And I don't know why I just obsess over it. I, I almost have like an addiction to this line where I always come back to it. It's something that sticks with me so drastically throughout my life. And I think it's because it relates to my life regardless of the time period I'm in. I related to this line when I was a kid watching the movie and I relate to this line now as a 22 year old woman, basically. I, I, I think it's just so perfectly and I think I'm gonna relate to it when I am a fully grown adult with my own kids, hopefully. Like, I think pregnancy is beautiful. <laughs> well, you're lucky it's not you. Huh. Let's, let's talk about how we're gonna those do this. Those lines, those lines right there. Those lines that kind of make you want to die, but also like are so important to showcase how young and stupid and immature she is. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. I have such appreciation for the simplicity of those small lines in this movie. And that's why the screenplay is so good. The screenplay is so good and that's why it got awarded because those simplicity within those small lines. It reminds me so much of Little Miss Sunshine. I love Little Miss Sunshine. Also one of my top, top like movies of all time, Little Miss Sunshine. And it's so important with what happens later in the movie that that is one of the first things that they both hear from her, specifically him, the husband hears from her, is her making 
a severely insensitive remark about her pregnancy. Granted, she's 16 and that's normal for 16 year olds in my opinion, but later on, what happens with that man and that 16 year old? You're playing music. Juno wanted a little closer look at Kimber. My ex is named Roosevelt, but after Franklin, um, not Ted Franklin, he was the hot one with, uh, with polio. Yeah. Um, hey, Greta's downstairs. Ew, what? Do you see that? I hate that. I, and Jason Bateman plays it so well. Like, props to Jason Bateman for playing such a uh, character because watching this as a kid, I love this movie for so long. It's uh, watching this movie now as like a 22 year old versus when I watched it when I was like, I would say like tween years, 10 or something like it's so crazy. Cause I really, up until I was about out of high school, I don't think, I would say after I was like 17 or 18, I really didn't realize the like depth of these scenes within Juno. When I was 16 watching this movie, I was like, Vanessa's so uptight, Vanessa's like, literally so crazy and so uptight on, on her husband. And now I watch this and I'm like, her husband was a fucking loser. For me, I only saw him as the bad guy when he makes a full move on Juno. But watching it as an adult, the motherfucker is acting so weird the moment he meets her. It's not till, it's not like further down along the line that that just becomes inappropriate. It's inappropriate now. Immediately when they meet, it's inappropriate in a room alone with a 16 year old talking about guitar, da, 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 da. bring it downstairs when you're in front of their, her, her dad is downstairs. Bring it downstairs and talk and just say, oh my God, I didn't know we had a similar interest. She's continuing on the conversation, but she's a child. Of course she's continuing on the conversation. She's weird. You're an adult, don't do that. You're an adult with the wife trying to adopt her baby. You're crossing the line, buddy. Juno was his only wife and she was supposed to be like really beautiful, but really mean, like Diana Ross. Well, that suits you. Thanks. Ah! <sighs> Even the way he's sitting, why would you be sitting like that? I would literally be sitting like l legs crossed, cl her her pearls clutched like this. Why is he so? Put the fucking leg down. Put that arm back to yourself. Stop saying that I'm a beautiful goddess and super mean. You're fucking weird. You're weird. You have a wife. She's you're supposed to adopt her baby. You're supposed to adopt her baby. You are something else. You're something else. I will do terrible things to you. I will do terrible things to you. He's... I, Props to Jason Bateman because he plays it very well. He does a very good job in this role. He is fuck it creepy in a, a very, some would say subtle. I'm not gonna say subtle because like, I think it's very apparent, but like this weirdly like cool, charming way. Like, and that's how most creeps are. Most creepy dudes aren't these snaggle tooth hunchback, like monsters of being that say they wanna like lick your toes from, crevice to crevice. Most creepy guys are clean cut, well-spoken, share similar interests, chill guys, nice guys, nice guys. They're nice guys. And that's what we need to work, that we need to stop telling people and telling young girls that like these creepy guys are just like, these monsters, because they're not. They're your teachers, they're they're in your churches, they're they're your coaches in your sports. They're they're nice and they're charming, and they're also weird. You don't know how many times coaches have offered to drive me home after practice because I lived far away from my gym. Uh, my mother would never let me ride home alone with a male coach. Never would she ever even though that drive was horrible she took me every single time because creepy men are nice creepy men are nice and that's the horrid part now i now i now i don't know now after 2024 i don't know if they're gonna be so nice anymore um because they feel like they have immunity 
of some sort. They think that nothing will affect them after 2024. They think that they will be invincible to everything, but you're not invincible. You're not invincible when I, when I cut your penis off. That You're not invincible to that, sorry. Should have gone to China. You know, cause I, I hear they, they give away babies like free iPods. Your parents are probably wondering where you are. Nah. I mean, I'm already pregnant, so what other kind of shenanigans can I get into? <laughs> I should, I should probably bounce. Hey, don't forget your bag. Ah, oh, bag. I think when you watch that when you're younger, like when I watched that when I was younger, I was like, oh my God, she doesn't like Juno and she's like offended by Juno. No, like, <laughs> no, she's like, why the fuck was she over here for so long? Why the fuck was she here when I wasn't? Because in my opinion, I think that if your surrogate came over to show you a picture of the ultrasound, the first thing I would do would probably be call my wife and tell them, hey, Juno just came over to show us the ultrasound. Uh, come on down. Come on down if you want to come on down and check out that ultrasound. I'm so sorry to Vanessa because when I was younger, I like didn't like her. <laughs> like when I, in the first half of this movie, when I was younger, I like literally didn't like Vanessa. Um, and that's how important it is to like talk about the movies that you're watching when you're younger with like other people because I didn't ever told anyone that. I just felt that in my bones. But I probably should have said someone, told someone because they probably would have been like, no, Trent, like she doesn't like him. She has no problem with Juno. She like literally doesn't like her own husband. She hates him. Consider it your musical education. Can't wait to see what you've got to teach me. Stop serving porn and get back to work. <laughs> just wanted to call and say hi. Oh, right. He's not your boyfriend. He's an old man. She's not your girlfriend. She's the surrogate for your baby. Not even a surrogate. Boys, Keith has been grading me like so hard lately. Do not call Mr. Conyers Keith. Why? Because my barf reflex is really in hiding these days. Oh, but Keith's hot. Ew. I think this is such a good contrast to what, both of their relationships, because she looks at what Leah's doing with the teacher as gross, disgusting, and wrong because it is and keith is what we associate creepy men with old teachers geeks taking advantage of a student and they are and they are i do not want this message to be that they aren't they are but juno's simultaneously saying this as she just called up the adoptive father to her future baby to flirt with him about the mixtape he made her. I love it. I think it's a really good drastic comparison because even when you're watching, you're like, yeah, Leah and the teacher is gross. But the gag of it all is that they're simultaneously throwing this like romantic flirtation ship that's going on between Mark and Juno. You know, you broke my heart. I. I I should be royally ticked off at you, you know? I should be really cheesed off. I shouldn't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, you just you just take Katrina the douche packer to prom. I'm, I'm sure you two will have like a real bitchin' time. Well, I still have your underwear. What, are you, are you ashamed that we did it? No. Because at least you don't have to have the evidence under your sweater. I'm a planet. I love that conversation. <laughs> I start every single like pause with this is that I love every single like conversation, but I love that conversation between them because I feel like you can feel both sides of the effect. I think like Polly kind of goes into the background a little bit when, you know, in the movie Juno, because it's like he's going to prom with Katrina and then she starts getting jealous and you're like, why is she getting jealous? She told him he should be with Katrina. She told him that they weren't ever really together and yada, yada, yada. I love the, the dynamic because right in that first scene when she tells him that she's pregnant. I'm pregnant. You can immediately tell that that's not the reaction that she wanted and his indifference on it, his uh, like basically apathy towards the whole thing, which is what she sh he showed her was not the reaction she wanted from him because she obviously had feelings for him. In the beginning scene when she's talking to Leah about it, she, Leah's like, you like him. You obviously like him. You had sex with him because you like him, not because there was nothing else to do. You love him. I like both of them expressing it where he's like, you told me 
you broke my heart. Like I should be mad at you. And you also get the, the resentment that Juno actually has for him because as much as she says that she's cool with this, she's happy to do this for this couple. She's happy to give the baby over. She's happy to carry it out. There is a certain resentment towards the person that impregnated you. And I think that's like a very real thing. And just because you guys both engage in the activity and it, it's, and it's, it's, part it's fault on both parts i think that a lot of girls that get accidentally pregnant and, and have to carry the baby full term resent the guy because in a sense they don't lose much especially on a physical level like you don't lose much the girl goes through so much suffering even if she is giving up that baby for adoption or even if she does choose to abort the the body still has to go through the trauma the only consequence lies on the woman on a traumatic level on a physical uh detriment level the men doesn't the males do not face anything and and i know people are probably gonna say men face child support yada yada uh money and money is nowhere near compared to the everlasting effects that going through a birth or an abortion or a birth and keeping the child afterwards is. The sacrifice of that is detrimental. It, 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 is, it is something that there's no comparison of what a man could do uh, uh, of that. Even though throughout this movie, Juno seems so happy to do this for this couple and she seems so definitive on what she wants to do for this couple. And she, she even gives Pauline an out that her parents aren't gonna tell his parents that he is the father of her baby. She suffers the the uh, a judgment and, and criticism from the world, from school, from from adults, in 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 the doctors. Like she's the one that's facing it. And so, even though in a sense it is irrational to get upset at him for this specific instance, it's like this 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 opportunity to jump on him because of all this resentment she has for him. Even though she made a lot of those choices because he doesn't suffer from the choices that he made. He made the same choice to engage in sex with her and, and didn't face anything. But I think it's a really interesting scene and I, that's why I like their relationship so much and what it showcases within it and a big juxtaposition between their relationship and the relationship that she has with Mark. This is where she should be when, when even Polly tells her that she's acting very immature. It's it's a very big slap in the face because she feels so mature, because she thinks I'm hanging out with this older guy. I'm I'm relating to this guy who has a big house and who who has accomplished everything. Like I'm relating to him. I'm mature. I'm carrying out this baby. I'm mature. And so I think when Polly tells her that, it's like, who the fuck are you? But it's the only person that's really telling her to her face that she is acting immature because she is immature. She's a child at the end of the day. She's a teenager. She's 16 carrying this baby. She is immature. And I love this scene so much for that. I think it's, it's like encompasses so many aspects of the movie in this one scene. It could just be deemed as a fight between them, but it encompasses a lot of what's going on between the two characters and between Juno and a lot of different characters. And that's why I love it so much. Wow. That sure it's working hard. Is Vanessa here? No, we are safe. Sweet. That's already, if you're saying we're safe from the, from your wife, that's, we shouldn't be saying that. There he is. So this is where I keep all of my old comics <laughs> and I want to show you one. Why does he have like seven rooms dedicated to himself? Like. Most fruitful Yuki. Mm -hmm. Is this a pregnant superhero? Is that great? That's really fucking weird. Oh. Yuki is a real badass and oh. should be very proud to be in the same condition. If an old man starts showing you anime, you need to run. Like you need to get out of there. This is this is not just a warning. That that's a freaking order. That's not a warning. That's an order. Dances are for nerds and squares. What are you? Again, right there, right then. She says, "I don't know." Again. Does it feel like there's something between us? <laughs> That's so weird. Pause. It, that's so fucking weird. You are belly to belly, not even belly to belly because she's so much fucking shorter than he is. Belly to fucking crotch with your baby that you're trying to freaking, you're trying to adopt with your fucking wife. It doesn't even make me sad just watching this. It makes me sad like that this happens. This grooming happens so frequently and 
we need to start teaching young people we need to start teaching children about the niceties within creepy people that creepy people are not just in a van with candy they're complimenting your interests they're they're sharing the similar interests that you like they are they're relating to you on things and they're really cool and really re uh, friendly and they're not so immediate with what they do that's wrong it's this like it's so calculated and it's just sad and i th and i think we need to like really instill within the newer generation where grooming is so easy how dangerous it is and she's seeking validation because of what happened with polly she's seeking some sort of validation from this older man that shares interests i'm leaving vanessa no you definitely can't do that that's one big fat sack of no what is the matter what do you mean what's the matter you just baby's not gonna fix everything besides i don't know if i'm even ready to be a father but you're old <laughs> Yeah, you are fucking old. How do you think of me? You know, why are you over here? This is my fault. No. Is Vanessa, like, mad at you because of me or something? It's got nothing to do with it. Vanessa and I aren't in love anymore. <laughs> she immediately, like, asked if it's her fault. If it's her fault that he was literally... He's literally leaving his wife, and I don't know what he was expecting. He was expecting her to go run away with him. I don't know. He was confused as to why a 16 year old girl was coming over to his house um buddy you were opening the fucking door she was coming into the house because you were opening the fucking door and saying welcome in welcome in a 16 year old girl having a crush on an older man is normal i'm sorry it is normal a lot of a lot of teenage girls have crushes on guys that are older than them that's that's how life works. Older men should not be engaging with that behavior no matter what. No matter what, no matter what, what the fuck are you doing? You're fucking old. He's not even ready to have a baby. You're like those fucking literal, literal 40 year old men on hinge that it still says, don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what you're looking for. You're 40. You're literally 40. You're planning out your retirement plan. What the fuck do you mean? You don't know what you're looking for. You're not ready to have a baby. Peepaw, time is up. Peepaw. Time is up. You need to, like, you, did you know you have 30 minutes? Did you know you have 30 minutes? Yes, 30 minutes. You don't have any more time to decide. Four different times? You're just not trying hard enough. I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I'm an idiot. No, 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 you know what, Mark? No, you're not an idiot. Not you're a fucking divorce. pedophile. Will you please just do me a solid and stay with Vanessa? I'm so young. I'm not that young. Okay, I'm 16. As soon as she disagrees with him and faces him with the reality of things that he shouldn't leave his wife to chase some sort of fountain of youth that he wants to uh, 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 get, now he wants to say she's so young and immature. She's so young, she don't know what she's talking about. But when you were dancing with her and hanging out with her alone up in your weird like one of your seven private rooms that you have of all your fucking stuff now she's not young but when she disagrees with you and tells you that you should probably stick with your marriage because it's something that you worked hard for and that you were in love with once and you should probably fight for it and try harder now she's young. Now she don't know what she's talking about. Now she now she doesn't understand the concepts of an adult life. But when you were dancing on her, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. Real men like this exist. Most men are like this. That's the thing. It's not even like people like this exist. So many men like this exist. And that's why I'm getting so like frustrated and like passionate about this because it's not like this is not an anomaly. This is not like something that just like happens once in a blue moon. So many girls have experiences with older men like this. So many. If you are a teenager watching this, when you are eventually older, and I'm saying this as someone that's not very old, like I'm 22 years old, and I've said that many times throughout this like video, but when you get to a point where you're older, when you're not 18 anymore, you're gonna realize how weird it is to be older and hanging out with someone who is 18 or 17, because it's not normal. It's weird. 
and there's no reason for that. That's not something that I engage with. You know what happened when I turned 21 and I was still on dating apps? I changed my Hinge profile to 21 and up because there's no way that I'm going on dates with people that can't legally get into the same places that I can or legally have a drink. Sorry. Maybe that's like being super strict, but no, I'm not going, I'm not going on a date with someone when I'm 21 and they can't even legally order a drink. No, that's ridiculous. And so if you are a young girl watching this, if anyone, anyone that's watching this that is a teenager or a young girl or whatever, please know that even if you don't think it's weird, it's weird. It's insanely weird. I'm allergic to fine home furnishings. Hold on, what's the matter? What's the matter? Just a little hormonal, right, Juno? It's, it's part of the process. What? He's so scary. What did you do? She immediately knows he did something. I. What would be a good time for you, Mark? There's just some things that I still want to do. Girl. Like what? Be a rock star? Don't mock me. No, I'm gonna mock you because you're embarrassing me. If I have to wait for you to become Kurt Cobain, I'm never gonna be a mother. I never said I'd be a good father. It's so upsetting because if you don't wanna have a baby, if you don't wanna be a father, I think that's fine. I think it's better to tell your wife that wants a baby that up front, even if they're the girl that's supposed to have your baby is almost due. I think it is very important to tell that, but do not. Why would you tell all that stuff to the person that is supposed to give you their baby? Why would you ruin, and in, 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 in this point of the movie, like it, it, why would you ruin that moment? Why would you ruin that, that the opportunity for her to have the baby too? Why would you tell that to her? Why would you tell that? Why would, why would you confess that to Juno before you told your wife, you fucking freak? There's one specific podcast clip that I have watched and it is these two guys talking about Juno. And I've only seen this clip, so I don't know who they are and I don't really remember the name of it or the context of the clip in full, but I think it's an important thing to talk about because I think it's a rhetoric that maybe a lot of people like agree with maybe. And it's the idea, it's the opinion of why is this plot line included in the movie? Why do they make Jason Bateman so creepy? Why do they include this, this plot line of grooming within the movie? It feels unnecessary. Unnecessary is is a word thrown around, right? That like it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything to the plot. It's it's they just throw it in there. And I think that is one of the biggest misinterpretations of the film. It is so important that this happens for Juno as a character. Looking at it just from Juno's point of view, just from Juno's point of view, the the, the main parts of her that we have known is that she does not know who she is and that. She's just doing what she thinks she should. And it is so important for Juno, depicted as a 16 year old girl who thinks she knows what's going on, but constantly says that she doesn't know what type of girl she is to have a slap of reality in the face. And that realizes that there are things that are going on and things that are operating that she doesn't even know about. She doesn't even realize. And that conversation she has with her, her mother earlier on where she says, you don't know what types of things go on in, in a married relationship. And Juno just says, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know me. And this is her, her slap of reality where she realizes that there are so many things operating around her that she doesn't even realize. And, and what happens in this third act is her finally taking that back, her finally taking back the decision of, of finalizing who she is and not finalizing it because you're ever growing, especially, you know, through your adolescence is that like, she finally takes that back and finally decides for herself that she knows that this is the right thing to do. I think that is so vital to the story. Juno is not Juno without this happening. This changes her trajectory of everything that she believes. She lashes out at Polly. She she has this built up resentment for him and she turns to this, this older man for validation and realizes that he's this like really twisted and, and bad guy. When she looks at him as this cool guy that just kind of like knows her and shares interest to her. And, and she realizes that that's not at all what was going on. I think that it is one of the most vital things to the plot. I think that, you know, we talk about earlier how there's bits and pieces of the plot. Juno's not just about teen pregnancy. Juno's not just about 
uh, uh, the trauma she endures with grooming. It's not just about a mother who can't conceive on her own. It's not just about the relationship between Juno and Polly. It's about so much more than that and Juno as a character. And without the grooming, you lose the plot of Juno and her discovering who she is and her discovering the choice that she has in life and that and that illusion of adulthood breaking. If you watch Juno and think that the relationship between Juno and Mark is not vital to the story and, and unnecessary and, and just be it's just thrown in to be creepy and, and uncomfortable for no reason then I think you really miss out like so much of the movie and miss out like you know the true essence of Juno's character and all that she goes through in this journey. In my opinion. You know, it's okay. And also, um, I think I'm, I'm in love, love with, with you. you. Can you give me those friends? friends? No, because you're, you're like, like the, the coolest, coolest person, person I've ever met. met. I cry. It's, a, it's such a good movie. It's such a good movie. It's such a good, it's such a good scene. It's so beautiful. It's so sweet. I love it so much. I think it's because my heart starts pounding every time I see you. Mine too. <laughs> the greatest love story I know. The greatest love story I know, actually. Hey, you know, you could go into early labor sucky face like that. Weird hot lovers. It's such a good shot. It's such a good scene. It's such a good love story. Someday you'll be back here, honey. I'm going to cry. I already feel it coming. So sorry guys, I'm just an emotional person. It's a very emotional time. It's just such a good movie. And it means so much to me. It's a movie that's so good, but it also means so much to me. I love it so much. Why am I always crying? This is like, we're up to like 10 videos that I've cried in. Why am I so comfortable with crying? It's because I'm an empath. Don't even get me started on the song. I can't play the song, but Sea of Love is like such a good song. It makes me cry every single time. I knew you were my pet. I wanted... I'm like so emotional right now. It's so sweet. How do I look? Like a new mom. Scared shitless. It's so sweet because she was always meant to have that baby. It was always supposed to be her baby. It's framed. It's such a good movie. It's such a good movie. It's the perfect movie. Hey. Ready? She had a boy right there that loved music like she did. The whole time. Oh, it makes me so sad. It makes me like I'm a happy sad. I just love this movie so much. I just think it's like, I don't know. Like it just means so much to me and I don't know why. I know why, it's a great movie. I've watched this movie in, in, in so many different portions of my life. I watched it, you know, when I was younger, before I had experienced anything. I watched it when I was in high school after I finished my, you know, first relationships or my second relationships. And, and I had multiple relationships and, and, and seen this movie. And I think this is the first time that I've ever watched this movie. Uh, after experiencing and currently being like in love with someone. Like I've had multiple relationships, but I've never loved any of them. No offense to them. Full offense, full offense. And, and now I sit here like actually being like in love with someone, it, it evokes such different emotions. And, and I can't wait till I watch this once I've experienced you know, having children of my own and, and getting to experience it through that lens and, and, and experiencing it once I'm, you know, a parent and getting to experience, you know, the, the perspective of the parents within this movie. I think it's just so, it's so wonderful. It's so good and it means so much to me. It, it's helped me through so many different phases of my life and I hope, I hope it continues to help me through different phases of my life. It's such an important, integral part of my character and, and who I am to this day. And, uh, you know, for people, this is a passing movie of, a, of a, a teen pregnancy. But to me, it's like so much bigger than that. And um, especially watching it now uh, with the current climate of, you know, our country definitely is 
very emotional. I'm really sorry if you don't like it when I just love movies, but I've been a big hater of some movies recently, so I think it's only fair that I evoke some love and joy into this world and, and uh, share my love and joy for this movie because it is something that not only is just something that I enjoy on a on a technical level of something that I can confidently say is written, produced, and, and directed very well. It's also something that is so personal, nostalgic, and and, and um, uh, fulfilling to me uh, as a viewer and as someone who likes to talk about movies and critique movies and you know all of the above. I I think that all around it's just this movie that like I am so in love with and and and, and part of the reason why I love movies is because of Juno. It's because of my passion and my. Uh, appreciation for Juno. Let me know what you think about Juno. Let me know your interpretations of this movie because uh, I, I know there's a bunch and there's different you know ways to interpret it every movie but I would love to know yours because it's one of my favorites. Um, I hope this video brought you a little bit of escapism, distraction, um, enjoy. It's very scary and I hope you guys all stay safe. I hope you guys all um, stay educated and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!